you're watching this, chances are you're human. As such, you have rights. Who defines them? Who defends them? And what happens if our human rights are impinged? To answer your questions on ITAL today, we have Jan Egelant, Deputy Executive Director of Human Rights Watch and Director of its European Operation. Uh, Mr Egelant, you're joining us from Oslo. Uh, hello, thank you for being on the, uh, the programme. Let's have a first question straight of all, which gets to the heart of your activity. Hello, I'm Loïc from Brussels, here in Belgium. I'd like to know how Human Rights Watch works and what exactly it does. Very simple question. What does Human Rights Watch do exactly and how, how do you function? Well, Human Rights Watch is a worldwide organization that researches, documents human rights abuse violence against individuals, uh, lawlessness against people, then we publish this so everybody can find out what is the truth. And finally, we advocate for change, that there should be the rule of law, that everybody should have their human rights defended. How do you guarantee that uh, what people tell you is the truth? Because a lot of people could invent stuff. Well, we recruit, we believe, the best of the best as researchers being experts on countries. They go to the field, they go to Syria, they go to Russia, they go to South Africa, they go to China, they go to all of the places where there is uh, war, uh, repression, discrimination and human rights abuse. They undertake hundreds of interviews and there are reports then, as we publish them every week, new reports, new press releases, is footnoted to the minute detail because we must be absolutely sure that what we preach is the truth and that is our strength. What we say is the truth as we've seen it, smelt it, discovered it in the field. OK, so you can see uh, the results of this research are on the uh, Human Rights uh, Watch uh, website. We have a question which has just arrived uh, on uh, your news uh, website, uh, Mr. Egelant. It's from Bertrand in Paris. What are the human rights issues in the European Union itself that the media don't talk about? Uh, do we have a clean house here in Europe? No, we are actually in Human Rights Watch concerned with with a worsening human rights situation in many European countries. I, I would say in three words, this is connected to minorities being discriminated, migrants having uh, their rights violated, and that the uh, minorities and the migrants are always more vulnerable in times of austerity. OK. Now, I know this is a subject uh, which interests Mr Egelant a lot. You've done a, a lot of research on this. Women's rights, we have a lot of questions about these. Let's have the first uh, question about uh, women's issues. Hello, my name is Mentor. I come from Belgium and I'm a Kosovar native. I'd like to ask a question regarding what happens with the rape cases in India. What is the Indian government intending to do? And what can we do as European citizens in order to stop this problem? How can uh, European citizens uh, help and react uh, against uh, the, the, what's happening to women in India with the, the, the news over the last uh, week? Europe can do a lot. As we speak, Europe is preparing for the European Union Indian uh, dialogue, annual dialogue, which also includes human rights. In that one, we believe that uh, Europe must insist that not only has the laws to defend uh, women's rights, there has to be a better practice. India has a lot of good laws. Uh, in reality, uh, corrupt police, uh, corrupt judges, corrupt leaders do not in reality defend uh, the rights of women. And what we saw even after some of these horrific rapes was that some politicians, religious leaders and others, uh, sort of faulted the women for, for this. Uh, this cannot be tolerated. The practice, the culture, 
has to change in India, as in so many other countries, in defending the rights of women. OK, let's have uh, another question on this same uh, theme uh, for Mr. Egalante. Hello, my name is Sabrine. I come from Belgium. The Arab Spring is a democratic evolution, but there isn't really an evolution with regard to women's rights. How do you view this situation? So another repercussion of this. With the Arab Spring, what about women's rights uh, in, in, in Arab countries? Uh, we are, for example, very critical of the lack of uh, uh, rights for women in Saudi Arabia, which is a country supporting some Islamic movements in other, other countries. But do they, do they listen to you? To do, they, do, do they really care about what you're saying? Because women still can't drive in the country. How can you uh, impact them? How can you affect what happens in these countries? by exposing what is happening in a place like Saudi Arabia, or for that matter, now in Egypt, where there is a, a, a battle of, of values uh, around all of this, and help those courageous women who fight for their own rights. And they fight for their own rights from Saudi Arabia to Egypt, or for that matter, in the horrific civil war in Syria. We have to expose the violations. We have to help them uh, uh, fight for their rights as equal to men. OK, let's uh, have another question here on iTalk uh, to Oslo. Hello, my name is Lola. I live in Belgium. In developing countries, do women take positive initiatives to change their conditions? In the emerging countries, uh, do, are, are women taking initiatives? Do you have examples of women who are trying to change things, uh, taking things into their, their own hands? Can you give us a few concrete, positive examples? Well, I, th I think uh, the long and good trend is that more and more countries are opening up education for women. Uh, never before in history has so many girls went to, to, uh, gone to primary school, secondary school, college, and getting university degrees uh, in many African and Asian and Latin American countries where it was unheard of to have um, female leaders in politics. There are more than before. However, it's, we're far, far, far away from the equality that um, women deserve. And uh, in too many places, they are discriminated in the labor market, in academia, and in political life. OK, a lot of people uh, sent questions in, Mr. Eglant, uh, asking us, uh, what do you think will be the human rights issues uh, in the future? You've been watching human rights for a long time. What are the emerging human rights issues uh, in, in this, uh, this century? Oh, there are, there are many of the, I mean, many of the old issues, like even torture, uh, extrajudicial executions, are still with us. Uh, we, are, we are now seeing the dramas of uh, Algeria, of Mali, uh, and, 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 and especially in the war of Syria, unfolding. Uh, the newer uh, generation of, of human rights battles, uh, to a large degree, is around the freedom of information, the Internet. The Internet is a great tool for opening up societies, opening up uh, dictatorships, but is also a place for uh, surveillance, uh, for spreading false accusations and hate. Uh, so I, I think in the Inform perhaps the, the battle for information and the battle for our minds is one of the, the, the future battlefields where, where our values, human rights, international law, uh, has to be defended. Thanks very much indeed, Jan Egelund. You can, as always, find out who our next guests are on iTalk on the Euronews website. Thanks to all the team here at the European Parliament's Audiovisual Services here in beautiful Brussels. See you soon. Thank you.